He's an award-winning actor whose roles include Sherlock Holmes, Doctor Strange, and The Grinch. His new film is The Electrical Life of Louis Wayne. Please welcome Benedict Cumberbatch. Hi, guys. Hi. There. Hi. So, Thank you for having me. We want to check in with you to see how you're doing. You recently had COVID, is that right? I did, yeah. Uh, I better know, uh, as you can see. But yeah, it's no picnic, and uh, it's just a sharp reminder that this thing ain't over yet. Um, but um, I was, I was one of the lucky ones for sure. But it's, it's horrible. Have you guys had it? No, thank God. I mean, I mean, we're yeah. even afraid to even say it out loud. Yeah. But no, thank God. But you know, I think if you're in a work environment like your studio, and as I was lucky enough to be in diversity all the way through uh, the winter lockdowns we had here, and you were so many, I can't even remember how many we had, but I was doing Doctor Strange too, and it was like the gold standard. I felt more safe there than I have done since that finished. Yeah. It's, it's then run, so yeah. Yeah. So in, in normal times, um, once you feel much better at 100% at and you're not doing a yeah. film and you've got a day off. And there's and not a pandemic. There's not a pandemic and there's a day to just <laughs> go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I wish we could tell you. Um, but there's a day where you could just do whatever you want. What do you like to do? How do you like to spend that time? Uh, I have a very busy family life, but I like to cook um, anything by Nigel Slate, who's a great chef, but also Al Brown, a Kiwi chef, and um, Dale Pinnock. I also like to surf. Oh. Like to, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Where, I mean, I, where, where? Just, where would you surf? Anywhere where there's a decent wave and a friendly crowd that will let me have a go. I'm no great shakes, but um, no, I do love it. There, there's some wonderful spots on the south coast of England. There's also an inland pool, a little bit like Kelly Slater's ranch that I've heard of in the States. And uh, it's called The Wave in Bristol. A friend of mine sort of uh, co-founded it. So I've been there a few times during the summer. I've been there in the winter, but it's an all-year-round thing. I and got, I got caught yeah, up. I just love it. I got caught up crossing people who were territorial about their space and their waves. Does that happen? Where you surf? Um, yeah, yeah. If you're if you're if you're jumping on someone's wave, if you're cutting it further down the line, it, it's hard sometimes because you spend so much time as a beginner trying to be in the right spot and you know get the shoulder of the wave and pop up and balance on your board, and then some guy goes, "Hey, hey, hey!" Right. And you think, "Oh crap, it's their wave. I need to get off it." So, uh, but it, fair enough. You know, that's the rule of the uh, the rule of the water, and um, I'm happy to abide by that people people are pretty friendly and very helpful and everyone has a good tip so yeah i've, I've, I've encountered good folk out there i always think that it's they assume that you have more control than you actually have when you're at least yeah, when you're I, learning to surf, yeah. it's like, if I yeah. could actually control what's happening here, I would definitely not cut in front of you. No, right? right. No, that's so and true. Also, I, like, I always hey. hold up my hand. Go, you wish you had, like, learner plates on. Right, stuff, exactly. You know, like, on the board. We should get a little applause um, that we got up on a board, right? I, hey, aren't you guys proud, right? The, we cut across and stood up for what seems like 10 seconds. It's probably a half second. That's the talk show effect. You want people to stand up and applaud you. <laughs> the most mundane. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay with us. You're on live. Still ahead on live from Dancing with the Stars. And look how he's fancy all adoring. Half his opponent's size, yet he knows how to harness the electricity of the crowd. Are you talking about the photographers? Look properly, Herb. The electricity. Finally, I'm starting to understand it. Is everything all right at home? With Emily, I mean. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, and we have a new friend. He's called Peter. Peter? Yes, he's a cat. We have a cat now. Electrical Life of Louis Wayne, based on the real life uh, story of an artist. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Yeah, Louis Wayne was a, an extraordinary human being. Um, he was an illustrator, a very talented artist, and that was his chief skill. He also, as a young man, fancied himself as a boxer and an inventor and a, 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 an opera music writer and all sorts of things that he wasn't particularly good at, but he was chiefly incredibly skilled at drawing and painting. And he could do it at great speed in the days before photography. So he started out recording everything from uh, events, boxing matches, as you saw there, to uh, prize bulls at um, mar farmer markets and all sorts of animals. And and then he really became very famous for drawing and painting cats and a very particular cat style uh, which developed throughout his entire life and um, he was incredibly well known very popular and utterly broke he had to um, earn money for his uh, 
and huge family of sisters. He was ostracized from them and society at large because he fell in love with their governess, who was 10 years older than played by um, Ted Hinn, rather, played by Claire Foy in the film. And that was seen as a disgrace, both uh, as far as going down in class, but also the age difference. And he was exiled. And when his wife tragically becomes ill, they befriended a cat called Peter, and they took it in and had him as a pet. Now, this is in the era where cats were one up from the vermin they were used to catch. And, uh, you know, the expression, drowning a bag of kittens, unfortunately, wasn't just an expression. Mm. So he kind of historically popularized and domesticated the cat, really. Um, and in amongst that lived this very extraordinary life. Someone who struggled with mental health was a brilliant artist, like I said, and um, showed great courage and determination in a life that he found, and which was at times very, very challenging and difficult for him. This is actually a great description of the film. She says in surprise and awe. No, because... She shockingly states. <laughs> no, no, but you know, sometimes... Was a bunker. I, I produced it. I play him. I mean, oh, no, 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 no. You, be, you have no idea. You would be really surprised at sometimes I go, well, right? that's not what the film is about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I got it. I'm glad I got it. Listen, in, nobody in, in, would know. Right of. It's, it's a hard thing. It is actually, in all honesty, it is a hard thing. I sort of sit here at the other end of this weird, you know, device course, set up, yes. which feels so odd. I started off being in the studio with you guys. It's very hard to actually do it justice because, you know, it's an entire man's life. It's a very yes, complex right. story. And uh, he's a very colourful character whose ideas of, of reality and uh, imagination kind of slip a lot. He, he really did suffer from some serious mental health issues mm -hmm. at times in his life. So this is all brought to life by a brilliant director called Will Sharp, I should add, who really was the driving force behind this. And until... I got the script first, and then about sort of three years into the development, on he came on board, and that's when it really, really took off. But I, I didn't know him, neither did Will. I think we had vague recollections of his drawings and pictures from maybe our childhood memory bank somewhere, but uh, nothing about his life. And uh, to explore it through Will's ideas of creating a world that's basically through the eyes of Louis Wayne. So when he has episodes, it's as if his paintings are coming alive in front of him, the colours turn up and these papier-mâché heads appear, mm. which are cat heads on top of real people. Um, and it's kind of surreal and spooky and, and unnerving. And, uh, yeah, that's Will Sharp. He's an amazing director. And it's called The Electrical Life of Louis Wayne in theatres now and will be on Prime Video November 5th. Benedict, glad you're doing better. Thanks for coming on. Be Thank well. you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. We'll be right back.